Hello, welcome back. What do you do if you want your ATAT to be poseable? Um, I've got a studio scale one that I'm building for a client at the moment. Uh, I've just been putting together a few bits and it's become clear that there's a few little things that we need to change on it. So one of the things is the length of the top leg, um, which is a little bit long as far as I can tell. Uh, so what I've done is I've scaled everything, got drawings into CAD, switched them around, uh, tweaked all the bits, tried to make it so I can build it from uh, laser cut per specs with not a complex mechanism in it, but I want the pistons to move and I want it to be fully posable and nice and easily adjusted. So this leg section is composed of multiple layers. This is a rough test so I can see what's going on. It's nice and straight. Get you in line, there you go. Joints all work as they should. What I've done is installed a rudimentary mechanism inside the leg for these two pistons. So if you push one up, the other one comes down. Pretty simple, straightforward stuff. So now I know this test piece works and it's got the right dynamics and it's the right shape and the right size to fit all the other pieces onto. I can now start to modify that. So I tweak the base of this. So I've chopped the rest of the leg off, but that's an insecure joint. You can't have anything butting up glued, otherwise that's gonna be a major weak spot in the assembly. The original feet mechanism that came with the Merlin one had two little gear wheels that run around on these two spigots here. Didn't really wanna use those, so I've used those as pickup points for these two pieces on the per specs so that when it fits together it lines nicely on there and it will have a real element of strength to it so that should be a good strong joint the reason that we're making these out of per specs is it, you know these collectors they keep their models for like 20 years 30 years I can guarantee in 30 years that that model is not going to be as straight as it was when I made it so with the per specs, I pretty much can. Uh, I could go the full hog and start inserting any of these parts as metal laser cut pieces. I think I can get away with most of this out of per specs. Just spent the last day cutting all the parts to make four of these. And uh, yeah, this is what you get. A shed load of parts, ranging from little washers, compression pieces, parts that hold the leg assembly to the body. Fairly comprehensive amount of bits. Nothing like the original. The original was probably triple this amount of bits with all the various mechanisms. There's still parts missing from here like the pistons which is made from this five and a half mil square brass. These fit into these little recesses here and slide up and down. And the actuator for those is a little tiny piece of perspex that pops into there and you can see when one gets pushed up the other one goes down. The pivot for that is actually this hole on the rear side of the piece that fits underneath it. So these two parts fit together like this, then the little actuator goes into there, then you start layering up. Top panel goes over the top of that, piston goes inside, see how it builds. So yeah, that's the uh, the cut parts for four legs of an ATAT walker. So let's get the assembly together. What I'm doing here is basically sorting out all the parts, getting them all together, and then I'll be layering them up, eyeballing them through the perspex and putting a tiny little drop of CA glue just on the edges to glue them together with my uh, Wee Scalpel. You can see the uh, glue underneath the perspex working between the two parts, so you know when you've got a decent connection, so no need to flood it. Uh, it's a very strong connection with this perspex. Gluing on the main spigots for the avocado bits, they register onto the uh, nut and bolt in the centre 
and a little two mil hole for alignment, which is where the internal cover goes over to cover that nut. So that's all nicely done. That was dead easy job. Now I'm adding the neodymium magnets to the covers for the joints. They've got to have a little bit of extra detailing put on the top side, which is the cut down head of an Allen key nut and a little bit of detail, like a lozenge on the top ones. So now onto the pistons. These things are held together with little tiny lengths of a Dyneema line. It's a very strong line. Glued to the piston and then glued to the actuator. So they won't take a lot of tension. It's a good idea to adjust these by pushing the piston up rather than pulling it down. I'm pretty sure they're gonna last a long time as it's hellishly strong line. So I've not got any worries about that. The pistons have a little bit of resistance anyway, so should a line break in the future, it'll be a nice easy job just to move them around and sit them where they wanna go. Now I'm adding the uh, curved details around the edges of all the joints. These are like little protruding washers that come off the surface to add a bit of detail. A little bit of thick CA glue, you don't need a lot. Now I'm taking these off for paint. Popping them into my mole grips, give them a lick of paint, do them all grey. Job done. Next onto the washers for those. Now I've got an alignment point and I know what the tension settings are on those screws. I can add the final details. Alrighty, so we've got a nice solid construction now. These pieces are going to be re, uh, redone and fitted nicely. We've got full articulation, all the legs work. Um, we've got pistons, move up and down. Still got to put the bottom half on those. And they're okay. Everything is nicely adjustable and poseable. So that works okay for me, kind of like that. Can all be tightened up with these little Allen screws just here. So you can nip up the joints. Make it nice and solid. I should be able to get whatever pose I want out of this now, which is good. And I can adjust it without taking any of the joints apart. So that is a, a good improvement on the model, that one. And the legs are absolutely straight as well. So you're not gonna get any warping with the resin over time. Yeah, I think that's a good upgrade. A Little bit of finishing off to do. I've got to fill these back edges on the tops, make the detail panels for these sides, fit the piece on the back here, fill the area in the foot, add the other side of the foot and add all the pieces and then I think the legs are pretty much good to go. I've got the sliding piece to put into this slot underneath here so that when this rotates the pin moves with the slot. Next up, detailing and finishing. So now I'm working on details for the legs. These are the little side strips that have the etched um, raised detail on them. They're all sanded down and flatted off, aligned on the sides and then stuck on with super glue. They've got a nice little chamfered edge so that when the joint closes together, they butt up to each other nicely, which is a really nice touch on the original version. Trying to replicate that.
just drilling out the holes at the top of the joints for my little real screw heads that I'm going to glue into there to give detail to match the original. I'm now gluing on the final strips on the back of those lower portions of the legs to get the detail on the inside edge and just test fitting them together. Me cutting off ahead of the screw. Now I'm adding a little bit of glue, putting the cut head of the screw into the hole and a little bit of kicker. What I've done to do the pistons is a little bit of rod, flatted off one side for the square to move across underneath. Trim the end to match the radius there. Then what I'm going to do is put the flat side in to the bottom, settle that into position best I can. And then I'm going to drop a little bit of super thin CA glue there. And hopefully that will go underneath and catch on that edge that's mated to that surface underneath. It won't travel down and gum up this because there's no connection between it. So I think we're pretty much there. Looks okay to me. Oop, I'm giving it a big bit of a quick kicker. Uh, that should be a usable piston. Yeah, so that works okay. One more to do. So I've got my little piece. I know where I need to flat it off. So what I do is look vertically down the jaws of the vise to see whether this cuts square, same top and bottom. I'll put my thumb next to the mark and just run a file on that edge. That starts off the flattening process on this round bar. You've got to be careful not to go too aggressive or you'll spin the bar and then you'll have scuff marks all over it. What I'm aiming to do is take this down to clear the thickness of that square brass that makes the movable part of the piston. One of the ways to do it. So now we've got a recess on that back edge there. Quick sand, see if there's any flashing or anything that needs to come off. Take those two marks off there. Okay, so that should be our new piece. So again, we'll push this piston right up to the top, fit that underneath there, drop it in, align it with the sides of the gap that we've got to work with. So it sits pretty good. And again, we're just going to drop some thin CA in there. The feet are in position. What I did here, inside here, was put a little felt pad just on the lower surface of this. I know it's not going to take the load because that's going to go on the top but it just provides a little bit of resistance to stop these things flapping about. So that works okay. We've got all the details on there. They're ready now for a clean up and a paint. So the legs are almost done and dusted. Because we want to be able to move this and animate it without having to disassemble the legs and jump cogs like this. This thing doesn't move when it's in position but you can separate it, move it, put it back together. But it means that, this is the neck, it means that you can't move the head without taking the neck off and sorting all this out. So what I'm gonna try and do is shave a few of these off, get some kind of resistance in there and have some kind of fluid universal joint instead of this stepped one that has to be dismantled every time you wanna change the pose. So that's gonna be changed. Um, the main leg assembly that fits on the outside of this, this pin goes in here, grub screw goes that way. Then the leg assembly here 
which is now made from uh, Perspex. It's the wrong way up, but you get the idea. Um, this now clamps around this other Perspex piece, which is 0.2 of a mil larger in diameter. So it opens up on this little cut at the end here. Normally there's a compression screw on the end, but this is definitely not strong enough to deal with that. So we're shimming this. We're gonna slice that down a little bit to take it down to about four and a half instead of five mil. That'll then be bolted to this plate like that. This leg assembly will then fit over the top of that like that. There's then a washer that fits over the top of the whole assembly and then a clamping screw. The middle screw of that joint is gonna clamp. Oop, hello. <laughs> it's gonna clamp this large washer to that, compressing this between two layers. And that should give me the stiffness that I need to be able to move this without taking it apart, separating it, put it back together, which is a real pain. So hopefully that should work. That's my next mission. So, what have we got now? Hello. We've got these sections here, lozenge pieces with the added 10 mil bolt. I drilled this original piece out, put a tap in it, tapped the bolt in there, cut the bolt to the right length, glued it in, making sure it's square this way. So I've got a grub screw in here with this inserted ferrule inside that now pulls on metal so it's not going to deform when it puts pressure on this pin. This pin fits in there really nicely now. It's actually minimal amount of slack compared to what it was. And when you nip that tiny little Allen key up, it uh, bites really nice. So you can lock it quite dramatically in position if you need to. So that's kind of cool. They move. The, the movement on these pieces is lockable. Normally on the original there's a compression screw here, but because these are perspex, I've put a facsimile in there of an original bolt, so that should never be used. The bolt that adjusts the tension on this joint here is now the center screw on this Allen head. So these are all adjustable as well for tension. And uh, yeah, we're getting there. Right, let's get these together and see how they look. Here's the legs, pretty much together. Need to paint that bit. Uh, everything works really nice. Everything uh, locks up tightly with the screw in there. Magnetic top, so you can spin that, put it wherever you want. And now I'm gonna fit them to these sections. Is just a preliminary build once again just to check a couple of things I don't know if you can see that but I've basically taken down those teeth so that there is a little resistance but they don't engage fully into the thing now over time they will wear as you move it, but it's not going to be a heavily moved joint all the time. It's going to be posed and then maybe moved once every couple of years or something like that. So these now fit together. And what I've done is drilled all the way through the assembly, put a small five mil bolt through there with a nylock nut on the back side. And now these have a small amount of engagement so I can now move these independently without having to break that joint apart, which means once the head assembly's together and you've got the silicon tube over there, you don't need to pull the silicon tube back, disengage the head, move it. The same with the other two joints. It's a little inconvenient that for posing. So that's what I've done. All those joints have been shaved down and they now have a little bit of a little bit of a jerk, but the main resistance is the compression of these bolts through this area with nylon nuts on the back. I've put these joints together and what I've done is I've aligned this edge when it's straight with the bottom edge of this cast piece here. 
So that should mean that those two are square. Obviously as it rotates, if you've got an angle on it, that angle's gonna change, but when it's dead straight, I've made that parallel with that. I'm hoping that's gonna be a good datum. If it's not, I'll have to tweak this and just shuffle it about a bit. So now I've mated the top of the body to the chassis and I've filled in all the little junctions of those pieces, sanding down that filler to get a really nice smooth edge. Now on the feet, I'm drilling through that top and inserting a six and a half mil ferrule, just something to tighten it up. The original rod was a bit loose. Now I'm fitting the legs for the first trial fit with all the parts. The feet are on, as you can see, uh, they're loosely on. I'm just testing a few things out here as, I'm, as I work through it. I'm fitting the legs, I'm putting the little pins in at the back. There's an etched groove at the back of that semicircular cut in the legs, which allows the little pin to slide up and down. Uh, so that should be adjustable nicely. I'm checking that the feet work okay. Everything seems to be pretty good. So the next stage is to get the feet finished and pressed into position to give them a little bit of resistance so they don't flop about sideways like they do there. Right, legs off again. This time we're doing a final detailing pass on the legs. I'm gonna start attaching all the little panels to the surfaces to give them that relief detail that they've got on the original. So I'm sanding those down, scraping off the backs, gluing them on with thick CA glue. The little scratches give the glue somewhere to go so you have less chance of it coming out the side of the panel when you push it down. You don't need a lot, but the grooves actually help to trap the, um, the glue underneath the panel. So that's a good tip. Also helps with adhesion. Now I made a little jig so the alignment of these top relief panels is all going to be the same on each one and perfectly central. Just making sure they're equally spaced around when I glue them in because there's a little gap from the laser cutter. But it's a great way of aligning stuff if you can. Saves an awful lot of messing around and marking and uh, measuring. You're guaranteed to get them all the same so that's good. Again, scratched underneath just so that the glue has somewhere to go, better adhesion and less chance of it coming out and gluing your template to the leg. <laughs> so now, airbrushing. People ask me, why do I do this? Spray the white in all the gaps. Well, what I want to do is to try and bring down the contrast of the final coverage, which will be done with a spray can. And the spray can's guaranteed not to go into all the little gaps. I know that this pass is not full coverage, but it's going to reduce the contrast should any of that grey still remain underneath. It gives you a much better finish on it, because what really what you don't want to do is pre-shade these things. Pre-shading is something really I don't think they did a lot of on ILM. All the work I think is done post base coat, which is, I think what gives them their look. There's no regularity to the weathering on a, an ILM model. It's all very real world. So you start with one colour and then you start to add. You don't pre-shade it first, or at least I don't. There's no rules, obviously you can, but this is just the way I do it. So I'm aiming to fill all the little difficult recesses with primer white before I get my first base coat pass on there. Just trying to make sure I get every little nook and cranny that I can find from four different angles. Rotate the piece, hit the bits you can see. Rotate the piece, hit the bits you can see. Just keep working around it. These are now the leg pistons and the leg covers getting a lick of primer. Just again, a quick hit in the recesses. Right, this is just the primer stage, but they're looking pretty good. Legs are working okay. What I had to do here was re-drill the main spigot through there. The pipe is an interference fit in the middle, so it doesn't freely rotate, it's not floppy, but it still bends in this direction, but there is a resistance to it, which means you can set the foot position much nicer. 
yeah, they look quite happy. So I'm good with those. pretty good. That one right there is the one we're doing and if you look at this the weathering on this model is incredible. It's not your bland weathering that you've got on all the ones that were shown at all the festivals and the shows because most of those were recasts of these. This is the original stop motion armature one and you can see the complexity of the paintwork is insane. On the side of the body there you've got at least three or four different colours running down from all the gaps you can see the texture on the side of the panel all those bits I'm going to be putting in as accurately as possible to this reference so stick with me for that if you want to see how to uh, make it look as messed up as this fantastic eh not a lot of people realize the complexity of the paint jobs in these hero models but this one is just stunning and it is so messed up it's ridiculous it's brilliant but it's super subtle, looks completely white from a distance. You get super close to it, my God, there is tons of mess on it. So that's our job for later. Yeah.